coming to you live. It's In the Know with Mo. And now, here's your host, Mo Vella. off i apologize not that anybody noticed or really cared but just in case you did i I apologize i actually am coming to you this week from the beaches of siches spain about 15 miles outside of barcelona as we say in the hispanic and latino community la madre patria that is the motherland to those of us of hispanic heritage uh, so it is good to be on the on the territory and soil of my ancestors. Uh, as I do every time we're together, I'd like to start with a moment of truth. Once again this week, unfortunately, in spite of the relaxation of the waves of the Mediterranean Ocean, I am uh, upset, disappointed, and disgusted by the Supreme Court's ruling today. Uh, uh, ruling unconstitutional the ban on concealed weapons in the state of New York. Why I am upset is because they keep banning things that need to be banned. Uh, I'm sorry, removing the bans on things that need to be banned, like concealed weaponry that has no place in a democracy in our human society. And they go and they ban things like controlling what a woman does with her body and so many other things like restricting access to voting. Um, So our democracy is turned upside down right now. As I travel through Europe, I actually, for the first time in 60 years, can say that there are moments where our tears have come to my eyes because I'm so disappointed in our in my home country and in our democracy it is fragile right now my friends it is fragile these type of rulings like today are just another slap in the face and a reminder that our democracy is possibly slipping through our fingers so we must rally we must save our nation we must rally for the sake of democracy Please join me in doing everything any one of us can do on the local level, on the state level, and on the national level. We must come together to save our beloved democracy and our beloved America. Um, So I am thrilled to welcome my guest this week. Uh, Once in a while, as you might know, I go international and global with my guests, and we do so again this week. Uh, We welcome Jacopo, Jacopo. Is that right? Is that right accent? That's correct. That's correct. Jacopo Pencini. Uh, Jacopo Pencini is a renowned international relations campaign and advocacy consultant, consulting for global institutions and na- national groups such as the European, uh, excuse me, Commission, the African Union Commission. I want to get these right. Chatham House, the European. Um, I can't read my own writing, some other European Institute, the German Development Institute, the United Nations, and the focus of today's discussion, uh, the uh, Rondine uh, uh, Cittadella della Pace project. That's perfect. Is that good? Cittadella della Pace. Uh, I, just so you know, Jacopo, I, io estudiare italiano due anno università, io cantare l'opera. Va benissimo, va benissimo anche l'opera. That, that, that's great. That... To our listeners and viewers, I just had the first time in 60 years I got to tell somebody this that actually cares. 
I studied Italian for two years in undergrad at university as I was on a full paid opera singing scholarship and I sang opera professionally. So many of the arias I sang were Puccini and Verdi, of course, Italian gods, right? <laughs> but we are here to talk about the Rondine, um, Cittadella della Pace. Uh, wow, Jacopo, where do I start? Uh, first, let me try my best. You know what? Instead of me doing it, why don't you describe to us what the Rondine project is uh, in your words, uh, because I'm going to not do it justice. And this has really inspired me when Mark Grimaldi, my producer, brought this to my attention. I was thrilled that we get to bring this to the American people and those who watch and listen to my podcast because, boy, this is special. So can you share with us a little bit about what you do at the Rondine Project? Of course. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me and, uh, and Rondine, Mo. Uh, so Rondine is, first of all, the name of a place and not just uh, of a bird, because Rondine in Italian means swallow. And uh, we have a whole tradition of uh, peace leaders in Italy, um, dating from uh, then Florence mayor in the, in the, in the 60s, Giorgio Lapira, um, who used to say that uh, young people are uh, just like swallows because they tend to migrate, they tend to uh, fly towards the future in that oh. sense. And uh, they, they, it's not just about bringing uh, spring, you know, it's just it, it's about bringing the future. But Rondine is actually the name of a place uh, oh. not far from Arezzo in central Tuscany and um, used to be a military hamlet, a military fortress in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. And uh, then it got completely abandoned and uh, a group of uh, friends, a group of crazy friends in the 80s uh, decided to actually restore the village to um, to use these buildings once restored for social purposes, for social impact purposes. And then uh, all of a sudden, this uh, group of young people got called by the, the then Russian government uh, because there was uh, the war in Chechnya and uh, the Russian government was l looking for um, young mediators from abroad, from other countries. And uh, actually this mediation happened and uh, uh, they managed to obtain a ceasefire for uh, 24 to 48 hours. Then it was, uh, the, the ceasefire failed at some point. But the next year, in 1997, when the war ended in Chechnya, the Russian government asked the same young people, as they knew that there was this place being restored for this kind of educational purposes, to actually host uh, Russian students. And the answer was yes, but we are trying to build peace. We are trying to build dialogue. And uh, so, yes, if we do say yes to your request to Russian students, then we also want the Chechens and the other way around because they have to live together, they have to study together. And that very first experience created Rondine somehow. Uh, they arrived, they stayed there for, for a few weeks until they had to wash their clothes together. And there was just one laundry machine. And one of the two groups left. The, the the place left the campus because they didn't want to wash clothes together and and that it's exactly from this very failure at the beginning of our story of the story of our organization that we developed since then the rounding methodology for creative conflict resolution making young people young enemies living together in the same place place wash their clothes together actually a training together which is based on listening to each other and developing this kind of new humanistic st skills somehow Wow. That's wrong. Wow. Wow. Mark, my producer, was right. You're speaking my language. This is this is uh, my mantra in life. In fact, Jacopo, that my next book that I'm writing right now is on building meaningful, connective relationships in business and in our personal lives. So I am so excited to have this conversation with you, learn more about your methodology, and we're gonna to get to that in a, in a, in a later segment. Um, so basically, I think it's safe to say to my viewers and listeners that what I understand Rodine to be is really you're redefining, repurposing conflict resolution, right? In other words, the tired old techniques and the tired old stagnant and ineffective um, 
ways that people were trying to find peace really don't work most of the time. And Ron Denae has just de developed a way, an effective, a more effective way to do that. Is that a fair statement? That, that's true. I mean, uh, methodologies from around the world and other experiences are, are, are not useless, of course. Uh, no, we no. build much of our work on that. At the same time, um, there are not many places in the world where enemies actually live together, young enemies. And in this yeah. sense, uh, here in Rwanda, they live together for two years. As far as we know, as far as we know, at least, it's the longest program of this kind globally. Wow. So when we come back from this, our first break, we are going to keep talking more and get more into the weeds, if you will, uh, on uh, Rondine and all of their incredible work. Don't go away. My you don't picture. want to miss this. Not leaving. I want to get back to seeing my grandbabies every Sunday and smothering them with big hugs and kisses. I want to get back to football games with my boys. I want to get back to feeling and touching, connecting with the people around me. I want to get back to family dinner and my grandma's mac and cheese. I want to get back to real grocery shopping, taking my time, walking down every aisle, smelling the tomatoes and melons, having a free sample or two or three. COVID-19 has changed how we live and how we feel. But now there are vaccines and they are the first step that let us get back to feeling optimistic about the days ahead of us. It's okay to have questions. Is it safe? Should I get it? Should I wait? Now, get the facts. Learn more at GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when vaccines are available to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hey, sis. Missed you this morning. Kim told me you weren't feeling well, so I'm just doing a self-care check. Oh, thank you, friend. How you doing? Girl, listen, my energy was so low because I didn't eat breakfast when I got up, so I had to miss virtual yoga with y'all. Mm, trust me, I understand. But I'm doing much better now that I've eaten, so I'm back on track. Great. In that case, let's get some steps in tonight. I'll come over and we can walk around the lake. Sounds good. Appreciate you being in my business, too. Now, let me get in yours. Did you check your blood pressure today? I did that and my squats, okay? Okay. High blood pressure is not going to be my friend if I can help it. See you at 6? Let's get it. See you then. Now more than ever, it's important that we protect our hearts and the hearts of those we love. Check in on one another and be a part of a healthy blood pressure movement. Rally your squad to take the online pledge at releasethepressure.org. Brought to you by the Release the Pressure Coalition and the Ad Council. I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1947. That was the day the despised Taft-Hartley Act became law. It was a direct retaliatory response to the 1946 post-war strike wave where millions walked off the job after waiting years for basic demands. The labor movement mobilized against the slave labor bill through numerous rallies. The AFL joined the CIO in threatening 24-hour strike strikes across whole industries in protest as the bill wound its way through Congress. 11,000 soft coal miners in Pennsylvania walked out in a spontaneous protest strike earlier in the month. The bill passed over the veto of President Harry S. Truman, who would invoke it a dozen times over the course of his presidency. Many union leaders hailed Truman as a friend of labor for his 11th hour veto. Labor Party advocates were incensed that of the 219 congressional Democrats, 120 26 voted in favor of the bill. Practically overnight, the labor movement had been pushed back 25 years. Taft-Hartley was nothing short of disastrous for the American labor movement. With the stroke of a pen, the act criminalized many of the actions key to historic union victories in the 30s and 40s. Jurisdictional strikes, secondary boycotts, solidarity strikes, closed shops, and mass picketing were just a few of the most basic trade union activities now outlawed. The act helped fire the first shots of the McCarthy Red Scare by mandating that union officers file non-communist affidavits with the government, which was later found to be unconstitutional. The act also provided the ammunition needed to strangle strikes by empowering the president to easily acquire strike-breaking injunctions. And it allowed for the rapid growth of right-to-work laws at the state level. And because of Taft-Hartley, the union movement has suffered ever since. Always 
bringing me in with some Boston music. Uh, so our guest this week uh, is Jacopo Bencini from the Rondine Project. Uh, he is in, I believe, Florence, Florencia, yeah. it, Florenza, Italy, right this second. And I'm coming to you this week from Sicce, Spain, outside of Barcelona on the Mediterranean Sea. So uh, Jacopo and I are just sending all kinds of love around the world from Europe, right? Jacopo, this is our European greetings to the world this week. So uh, we're talking with Jacopo about the Rondine project. Jacopo, one of the things that I found very fascinating, first of all, I am so impressed, proud, thrilled about what you and the entire organization is doing. You're making the world a better place. Uh, anybody who knows me will tell you that I will do anything in my power to help you at any time that I can because I believe in what you're doing and I think you're making an enormous difference in the world. So thank you and, and you know, kudos. Um, I want to get into the methodology a little bit. I know that one of the pillars or cornerstones of the Rondine method is basically redefining or trying to erase in many ways, the word enemy. So can you walk us through that? First of all, what have you learned and what has the Institute learned about what creates an enemy attitude from between one human and another? Indeed, that's, a, that's exactly the core of our work. So, um, Start from the very early exprondine with, um, as I mentioned before, students from the Caucasus and uh, yeah, that area. Uh, it was immediately clear to everybody that these young people were so rooted themselves in the propaganda they have lived in for 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 their entire life yeah. that they tend to consider the other. In, the, in this sense, their enemy, you know, young people also, yeah, young people coming from the other community as as the enemy, as not as a person, as someone you could have a, a, a friendly chat with or drink tea together, but as an object which has been pre-identified by the way your your origi original society sees it or, or them. In that sense, um, it's really incredible how even uh, students age 22, 23 could consider other persons as non-persons, in fact. So the methodology developed in Rondon, which uh, has uh, finds its roots in, in modern psychology, starts from uh, your inner self. I mean, uh, before getting to know the enemy outside, you, you need to know which kind of enemies you have inside of you and uh, awesome. what is Brilliant. actually shaping your mindset. What is actually... Um, creating the ideas you base your view your, your views of the world on. So you start from this inner analysis somehow, and then uh, the um, you you get to the relationship between two persons, two people. And uh, in Rondon we do that with people from Palestine and Israel, people from uh, the northern and south of, south of the Caucasus, from the Balkans, from Colombia, from Nigeria, from communities which are actually enemy between them, but two persons. And we make them live together for two years. So they have to share their room. They have to share everything. Wow. The wow. Uh, cooking of meals every day, oh. not just studying in the yeah. campus. So know? they live together, they eat together, they practice, I mean, exactly. all, like, they work together, and they're trained together, they're learning together. <clears throat> Very interesting. You know, I, I use a different phrase on my podcast. So I've said it before on my podcast, so I want to just connect this for my viewers and listeners uh, many times i say it's so vital for each of us as a human being to know our core and that that is another way to say what you're just saying that's part of your methodology which is a person cannot overcome hatred or dissension or division uh, if i hear you correctly you agree with what i've been saying for a while which is you can't overcome those things unless you know who you are and you really go in and figure out why am I feeling that way? Why am I thinking that way, right? Where is this hatred or division coming from? 
So I yeah, really, exactly. I just really relate to that and re that resonates with me and I'm sure with many of our listeners and our viewers. So have you ever had a situation early in the time you put the two people living together? Have you ever had a situation where they got physically in an altercation? Hmm. Well, let me tell you a story and, uh, and an example. I'll start from the example in terms of how these young enemies interact. Um, I, I, there's a tradition in Rome Dine, that when, when a new student arrives, and they usually arrive by train in, at the station in Arezzo, um, we make their, their enemy go there to pick them up with a car. So oh, wow. um, in Rome Dine, uh, even before having this kind of intellectual contact with the enemy, you go through shocks. And that's the way you actually realize how much the idea of enemy itself is a global lie. And that's what we're working on. So they arrive at, at the train station in a place that never been before, in central Tuscany. And uh, the road in a car arrives and the person driving is actually someone they would have, would have never had the opportunity to speak to in their country. They wouldn't have wanted to. And uh, for instance, imagine uh, someone coming from Abkhazia having a Georgian student driving the car or the other way around they have no opportunity in their countries to meet at all and they speak the same language somehow and they know how to interact already and uh, I, before you were saying that uh, if i if i'm correct uh, that, that you studied italian at some point in your life yeah. and uh, italian is the language of peace in rondine because um, we are, we were looking for a lingua franca since the beginning and uh, english could could not uh, I saw this role, you know, for many reasons, also having people from West Africa and other countries where there was a British presence in the past. So uh, they learn Italian before arriving in Rondin and they start interacting in Italian, mixing Italian with their own words. But let me tell you the, uh, one story after this example of the car. Um, one of our former students, uh, one of the brightest, um, well, he's an Israeli guy. Now he, he lives in New York and he used to be a sniper in Israel as sniper. And he was welcomed to Rondine by a Palestinian girl, of course. And they didn't know how to talk to each other for weeks. And then when, um, when the birthday of the Israeli guy arrived, the Palestinian girl cooked uh, a cake for him. And, oh. she, and she told him, I know about your past, but I still want to be a friend of yours. Oh. And that's where the relationship changes completely. Wow, that's amazing. I, I just, I'm envisioning as you were talking about the example, uh, I mean, I, the, how the level of anxiety when those two quote unquote enemies get in a car and one has to trust and rely on the other one when you've been told that you shouldn't. And I cannot, I, can, I, w I wish we were measuring the anxiety levels of the people when they first meet. It would just be amazing. And then to watch the evolution through your methodology result in that cake baking, in that celebratory moment. We're, you anxiety don't is leave. a big we'll part right of our back work. With Jacopo Bencini, you don't want to leave this, as you can tell. Come right back. We'll be waiting for you. Amazing. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Right now, our country feels divided, but there's a place where people are coming together. 
I gotta tell you, I was nervous to talk to someone so different than me. Me too, but I'm glad we are. Love Has No Labels and One Small Step are helping people with different political views, beliefs, and life experiences come together through conversation, and it feels good. Wow, your story is so... Uh, Interesting? Yeah. <laughs> When people actually sit down, talk, and listen to one another, they can break down boundaries and connect as human beings. At lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step, you can listen to amazing, life-changing conversations and find simple tools to start a conversation of your own. I know one thing. This conversation gives me hope. It gives me a lot of hope, too. Take a step toward bringing our country and your community together by having the courage to start a conversation at lovehasnolabels.com slash one small step. A message from StoryCorps, Love Has No Labels, and the Ad Council. I never dreamed of growing up to be a political activist commentator, but here I am, and it worked out pretty well for me. I've been lucky enough to have a voice in public matters and eke out a modest living, running my mouth as an independent populist agitator. Still, I have to confess to the sin of job envy. Not in the sense of being resentful, but regretful about my own inability to lift the trade of journalistic commentary to the heights attained by a small, feisty collection of unique public opinionators, political cartoonists. In framing issues and rallying people to think and act, these journalists have an unfair advantage over us mere word crafters. They can literally draw a picture to make their point. They reach masses viscerally as well as cerebrally, and visceral usually outpunches cerebral. Editorial cartooning is a profession made up largely of progressive mavericks who enter the social, political, cultural fray with an abundance of anti-establishment audacity, an eye for irony, fondness for the underdog, and an ability to laugh at absurdity, plus artistic talent. Because cartooning is an expression of the human spirit that's been irrepressible since cave drawings, generation after generation of pen and ink champions of democracy blossomed. The general public's appreciation and demand for the cartoonist's unblinking honesty and satire have never flagged, even increasing whenever the artists come under public assault by autocrats, plutocrats, screwballs, and assorted other censors. These graphic editorial artists matter. Again and again, they've roused the public to rise up and put down corporate and political scoundrels, incrementally advancing our nation's democratic possibilities. As in the natural world, though, even the most beneficial creatures can be driven to extinction. This is Jim Hightower saying, check your own local newspaper. Are your favorite cartoonists still there? Awesome music it brings us back in with some lifting my spirits up. But Mark, you know what? In this, while we're doing this next segment, can you find an Italian song to play on the next one? Because our guest is Jacopo Bencini from Florence, Italia, uh, and we are honored to have him here representing the Rondone Project. In the last segment, not this segment, we're going to get to the Leaders for Peace Project. So don't worry, Jacopo, I'm going to get to that. But now I want to move to another pillar of the Rondonet method. Uh, I am so impressed and so excited about what you're doing. And I want my viewers and listeners to get as much as we can in this time together. So redefining, re, uh, maybe removing the word enemy from our vocabulary is obviously one enormous pillar of the Rondonet method. I, I, I read that another pillar is education. And so can you walk us through what that curriculum looks like? I know that these two young people from conflicting uh, perspectives and points of view come to live on the Rondonet campus and they live there for what, two years or so? Is that right? Two years, indeed. My goodness, that is like amazing. It's like dating. <laughs> Have you ever had two people get married? Okay, we'll save that question for another show. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> We're going to turn it into a dating project. How's that? Okay, so in all seriousness, so now they're there for two years. 
you clearly have a very, very uh, uh, established curriculum. What does that look like? Is it class for four hours every day? What, what does this look like? Walk us through the education component of the Rondine method. Well, Rondine has a program, especially for um, this kind of people, people coming from conflict areas, because then we have other programs as well uh, in the campus, but especially for them, the two years program um, is, is basically divided into, into two. So for the first year, uh, each student uh, could decide um, to, into which Italian university co continue uh, his or her studies, because uh, students arriving in Rondine should already, already have a bachelor. And they could choose whatever Italian university. We have partnerships with 90% uh, of them, I'd say. And they can continue their own curriculum while living in Rondine. So for the first year, they uh, just experience the fact of living with the enemy while continuing, you know, uh, upgrading their skills and reaching their goals in terms of in academic terms. Uh, then summer comes they finish their studies, they finish their one-year master in Italy, and then the second year is all about creative, co creative conflict transformation. Uh, by that time, they know the enemy, they know that thinking about the other person as an enemy is a, a huge mistake, and they start working with the enemy. And the ultimate goal is to have them make projects together for the day they will go back home. And in that sense, we had amazing, amazing experiences so far with former enemies actually bringing together people from the two communities or some of our students um, joining politics and becoming members of parliament or even deputy ministers in their countries. Wow. And, uh, um, you know, it's not that easy because when you go back home, 99% of the time you will be seen as an alien from your parents, your friends, your relatives, because all of a sudden you abandon the propaganda and yeah. the whole mental context you've been living in for, for your entire life until then. So you have to explain in this sense, each one of our alumni is a human multiplier of the Rondin method. Yeah. This methodology has been studied and uh, um, yeah, study, academically speaking, studied and researched by many universities in the world. Uh, I think it's useful to say that our president and founder and uh, main visionary, let's say, Franco Vaccari, uh, had the opportunity also to come to the US to give lectures at Harvard, at Georgetown and many other universities. And um, in that sense, uh, I can I can announce here this evening that uh, a new book in English for for the US public will be released in December. So Mo, you're definitely invited to this uh, pre book launch event in Washington DC in oh, the first week, first 10 days of December. And oh. uh, what, are we, what are we do in Rondine, let, let me just add that what we do in Rondine in terms of education is not just creating a new curriculum or creating new skills that could be uh, shown on LinkedIn. You know, it's a, it's a change of mentality yeah. and uh, it's something that adds to the skills and knowledge you already have. Uh, the young leaders we host in Rondine are already leaders in their fields. We cannot teach them anything more in that, but we try to help them change their minds themselves yeah. in that Be kind of setting. Changing human behavior. And I think it starts by changing the mind, the heart, and the soul, right? Indeed, indeed. Yeah, wow. It's just mind-boggling. You know, we, we hear it's no secret to the world, as I have been traveling in Europe the last 10 days and have seven more days to go. Uh, I am continually encountering the shock, frankly, in the countries I've been in so far. Uh, as to what we're experiencing in the United States. So let's talk about that real quickly. Do you have any plans to bring this methodology to the United States? If so, how are you going to do that? I don't know. Uh, I never thought, Jacopo, that uh, in my lifetime of 60 years so far that I would ever say on a podcast, we need what you're doing for the first time probably in you know, a long time. We, we've needed it before in our history. We've had horrible wow. conflict before. 
but we need it again in the United States. And I was hoping I'd never have to say that in my lifetime, but we need it more than ever. Are you planning to come to the U.S.? And if so, how? Well, that was already in our plans somehow. We already had experiences with some U.S. universities trying to understand how to actually bring the Rondon method yeah. uh, to the American public and also by hosting uh, students from the United States in that sense. Oh, we, we already had some experimental experiences some, year, some years ago in that, in that way. But um, let me tell you something. It's not just for young people coming from armed conflict. It's... I mean, the methodology could be applied to big companies, to communities, to um, every kind of human organization where there is a hidden conflict or a conflict which somehow it's not that explicit, but undermines the overall um, you know, functioning of that um, human group. And uh, in this sense, we launched uh, some three years ago Rondin Academy, which is a parallel experiment to the international campus for students that we have. And we actually offer companies and communities the Rondin method. And so far, this has been extremely and surprisingly successful with Italian companies and multinationals. And uh, we're definitely trying to bring that to the United States as soon as possible. We already do uh, something similar with universities. We had wonderful experiences over the past three, four years, if I'm not wrong, with uh, universities from Canada by hosting some of their students from a short residential period in Rondon and then getting a, a bit more um, digging, a bit more in depth the, the, the method while back home. And we're definitely of uh, US universities as well. We had already some meetings. We um, we we started this process. Let me say we um, usually come to the United States twice a year. Um, in particular, every year we come around December, as I was mentioning before, not just to present books or, or for our president to give lectures, but also to organize events uh, with the support of the Italian permanent, permanent mission to the United Nations and other partners to uh, actually involve as many countries and U.S. agencies and uh, departments as possible. Well, since we're about to go into, I think, our last break, um, let me say this as we're going to break. Uh, I believe in what you're doing so deeply that I want to publicly right now offer my support, my uh, collaboration, and any way that I uh, can be helpful. Uh, we need what you're doing in the United States more than ever. Um, we, as you know, have propaganda machines, uh, otherwise known as Fox News, um, who is uh, unfortunately, uh, and look, I think in fairness and in furtherance of the Rondonet spirit, uh, there's propaganda on both sides. And it's not, all, it's not always fair to just say that there's a propaganda on one side. In order to have people who are conflicted, they're hearing information that they align with on both sides. And so, uh, you know, we need to find this common ground in America. And it sounds like the Rondonet method, something we need uh, quite desperately right now. So publicly, I offer you right now and the Rondonet Project Institute and Academy, my undying support and anything I can do as you uh, want to enhance your presence in the United States. We need it. We need Thank you. you. Thank you, Mo. We need you. And on that note, we'll be back for our final segment with Jacopo Bencini. Uh, you clearly don't want to miss the last segment. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just got to hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. <laughs> no, you hold my hand. Here we go. <laughs> Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. I learned patience from my adoptive dad. All he had to say was, Hey, you got this. Just breathe. <sighs> hey. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to start a band. <laughs> I got it. Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. <laughs> Visit adoptuskids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. 
COVID-19 has changed how we live and how we feel. We show up differently, worship differently, and have found new ways to express our love and support to family and friends. But now there are vaccines and they are the first step that lets us get back into the things we miss most. Like spreading the word without spreading concern, girls tripping instead of solo sipping, brunching instead of late night munching, and talking smack with a side of mac and cheese. It's okay to have questions about COVID-19 vaccines. Should I get it? Should I wait? Is it safe? Can I trust it? What about pre-existing conditions? Now get the facts. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org so you can make an informed decision when COVID-19 vaccines are available to you. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Nine one one. What's your emergency? America's healthcare system is broken and people are dying. Welcome to Code Whack, where we shine a light on America's callous healthcare system, how it hurts us, and what we can do about it. I'm your host, Brenda Gazar. This time on Code Whack, undocumented workers in California contribute about 3.7 billion state and local taxes each year. They hold one in 16 jobs in the state. What challenges do they face when it comes to getting access to quality health care? How is this impacting their health and our communities? To find out, we spoke to Luz Gallegos, Executive Director of Todec Legal Center in Southern California's Inland Empire. So now May 1st came and we have full scope Medi-Cal for undocumented older adults 50 plus in the state of California. It is a dream. Earlier today, we got a call from one of our members saying, I got my Medi-Cal card and she was just in tears. It was very emotional because she's all so many years of organizing and she, she would go to Sacramento and talk to our politicians that why they needed help care and she finally today actually today she got her card and she's all our work does help continue to stay quiet that's the biggest sin we have that staying quiet is not an option and seeing um the medical expansion become a reality has just been so personal not only for us as an organization but our entire members but our entire region and the, the entire state of california that they're finally giving back a little bit of our what our workers have been deserving for so many years full Code Wax story on ProgressiveVoices.com and on the PV app. Catch all our episodes by subscribing to Code Wax wherever you find your podcasts. This podcast is powered by Heal California, a nonprofit that uplifts the voices of those fighting for health care reform around the country. Until next time, stay healthy. Just going to listen. Oh, Mark Grimaldi, my producer. What a way to bring us back for the last segment with Jacopo Bencini from Florence, Italy. We're talking about the Rondonet Project Academy Institute. As a, you know, whatever you want to call it, it is a game changer. It's in making the world a better place through redefining conflict resolution, peacemaking at its best, uh, I think is another way to define what they do. Um, Jacopo, it's been an amazing time together. And I, on our last segment together, I want to talk about the, another important pillar of your program called the Leaders for Peace Project. I think that everything we've been describing or you've been sharing with us is about the Leaders for Peace Project. Is that true? Is that accurate? Indeed, indeed. Well, uh, we were just hearing um, some some notes from a wonderful uh, song Andrea sung Bocelli. by a Tuscan, Andrea Bocelli. That's and right. uh, 
Rondin is in Tuscany, and uh, I, I must say I love my region, but uh, former students of Rondin back in 2017, 2018, had the feeling that this whole experiment could not just live in Tuscany, could not just be, you know, an experience uh, with uh, without an international projection and uh, um, without having actually people outside of Tuscany and Italy knowing what was going on there. So um, all of a sudden they invented this, uh, this campaign called Leaders for Peace and basically our students at the time wrote down this uh, international appeal in many languages uh, asking all the United Nations 193 governments to commit to train new leaders of peace by investing in education, first of all, and uh, in, by inserting human rights and the teaching of human rights in the national education system. It could sound incredible, but in many countries, uh, there, there's no specific courses or classes on human rights at all. And uh, also to, for, for these countries who, you know, would like to commit in, in that way, to also devote a symbolic amount from their budget defense to education. Um, we decided that at the time we decided that it was it was worth believing in this campaign launched by the students. We discussed that with the uh, Italian mission to the UN. They immediately supported us, and we launched this campaign in the UN ECOSOC chamber in the in the hall uh, at the UN headquarters on December 10, 2018. Since then, uh, we had really hundreds of meetings with ambassadors, diplomats, government officials all around the world and in Italy. Um, and the, our students are actually the ones, you know, promoting the campaign. And even though uh, 2018 students um, finished their, their program and uh, went back home, the new students that arrived continued in this because they understood the importance of, of actually bringing this new kind of creative peace building outside Italy. And uh, I work for this campaign, that, that's my main job in Rondine, and I'm very proud to say that we can count on Italy, on Costa Rica, on the European Union Economic and Social Committee uh, as allies in this, as they officially endorsed the campaign. Uh, not last, Pope Francis also did so. Oh, okay. And we are in touch with uh, uh, really uh, a, a good number of governments and countries who are willing to and they're still waiting for you know internal authorizations from the capitals and ministries and uh, and that's the way we promote Rondine in in the world we also have uh, through the campaign um, a final goal a final concrete objective in Rondine we do not work on anything that is not concrete uh, and uh, be because you know it's plenty of wonderful books on how to solve conflicts but there you have young people actually doing that our concrete goal in at the end of the campaign so December 10 2023 will be the launch of a new global leader school open to students from all countries young leaders from all countries and not just uh, countries at, in, at war or in conflict between each other, but from all countries, so that they come to Rondine, have a fantastic residential experience from some time, share the same place and experience and houses with the students coming from places of war, and then going back to their jobs, going back to their communities and bringing this new mentality. Wow, and you know, it goes back to a speech I gave starting in 1994. Uh, that the topic of my speech was, let's build on what we have in common and celebrate our differences. And really, that sounds like a big major part of the Rondine methodology. Uh, also to find what we have in common, our shared values. You know, I've often said, Jacopo, that um, we have more in common than we do different. And if we go back to the basics, we all love and we all want to be loved, you know? And I just say, can't we just go back to those things? We all fear, we all dream, we all aspire, right? And so I'm your program and all of what Rondine is doing is something that frankly, I've been advocating for my entire adult life um, throughout my White House tenures and in all aspects of my career. So I'm really thrilled to get a chance to learn more about it and to hear, share this with our listeners and our viewers. Um, as I said earlier, I, wanna, I want to 
bring this home to the U.S. So in that spirit of what we're going through here in our country, um, what would you say is the number one key to overcoming fundamental conflict? I, I refer to it as hatred in many instances. What's the, what would you say is the most essential, integral thing in overcoming fundamental hatred? Well, from a very theoretically and academically point of view, I would answer the power of relationships and how you build relationships. But let me close with a story. A former student of ours, uh, an Israeli student, went back to, um, to the country and uh, at the time there was uh, there were some clashes between Israel and, and Palestinians on the border. And uh, while reading and watching TV and hearing that Palestinians were actually hiding in bunkers, you know, underground, the first thought that come to her mind, that came to her mind was to send a message on the phone asking, how are your parents doing in this? So that's that's beyond, you know, any academically or, or theoretically um, solution. That's asking the other person, how are you? How are your parents in that sense? And that's building relationships and trust between people. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the effort should be in throwing trust in a person or place or community. You would never do that otherwise. It's, yeah. it's a challenge, of course. It's a risk. It's a risk. Yeah, but that's and, I think, and also, don't you think respect, a, a mutual yes, respect, is. right? I think we've lost, we've lost the ability uh, to disagree respectfully, to disagree without trying to understand why we might disagree, right? But you know what? We've got two minutes left, and I, I just, you know, I want to close by saying that at the end of the day, um, regardless of what we, you and I believe um, is the integral key to this effective relationship building that overcomes conflict or that can survive conflict. I think that's a great way to say it, right? Building a relationship that survives conflict. Um, Regardless, I think it's fair to say in the Italian spirit, in the Latino spirit, uh, amor, amore, love is the answer to all of it. Uh, and I think if we all just learn to love one another, and on that note, I want to tell you, on behalf of the people, the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people um, that you have impacted, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing, Jacopo Bencini and the Rondonet Project and the Rondonet Academy, the Rondonet Institute, the Leaders of Peace Project. You're making a difference in the world, and it has been an absolute thrill for me to have you on my show. I'm honored, and you have not heard the last of me. I promise you that. Thank you, Mo, for inviting me, for, for having us this evening. And definitely, let's share the Rondini Method in the U.S. And I hope to see you in D.C. in December. I will be there, and I send you a big hug, un abrazo. I'm not sure how we say that in Italiano. Un abrazo, un abrazo. Un abrazo, okay. Peace, thank you. <laughs>